Hello everybody and welcome back to Elderberry Sprout. So today I wanted to share with you a couple of altar decorations I've come up with in the last couple of weeks. The first decoration is these altar tiles I made out of these pieces of wood. So firstly, I got these pieces of wood from a event called Zero Landfill. And I am so in love with this event. It brings together a whole bunch of used building materials from the area and brings it all to craftspeople so that they can freely grab these materials and make arts and crafts out of them. So I grabbed these wooden tiles, which I believe were samples for some type of flooring. You can pick up all sorts of free art supplies from these events, so it would be great to check out if you have one in your city. So for these tiles, I'm just using my Dremel tool to carve into them. There is a clear coat on the top of them, so by using my Dremel, I'm just removing the clear coat and making a slight indentation. This leaves a white residue behind. I'm currently using a diamond bit, but that's a little bit overkill for this project, since you could just use a sanding bit instead. So this pattern is a star tetrahedron, which I did a little bit wrong, but I end up fixing it later. This is a very special shape to me, and it helps me to focus my energy and balance myself. You always have the option to use templates to get a very clean design, and sometimes I do that. But sometimes it's fun to freehand and see if you can get the geometry correct on your own. I feel like it helps you to connect with the exact nature of the geometry a little bit closer. Particularly with straight lines, I feel like it's uh, a manageable task. So for the onk, I used a sharpie, and I don't suggest you do that, because it was quite hard to remove, so I ended up not really using this one. But I wanted to show you my failure as well as my success. Most of these tiles I will be using to help focus in my intention while meditating. Sometimes just having a pattern in front of you to bring your focus back to when your mind starts running allows for you to get back into your body a little bit easier, especially when the pattern represents how energy flows through the body, like in the instance of this Ankh, and the star tetrahedron for that matter. And now I'm doing a seed of life pattern. <laughs> Like I was saying, the Sharpie was hard to clean off, but this one turned out pretty good. After freehanding, I did figure out that my circles are a little uneven. That's part of the charm. Overall, I'm kind of surprised I was able to even make this pattern. And I cleaned the Sharpie off with some acetone. The next project is this carved spell box. So I have these little wooden jewelry boxes that I've picked up at thrift stores over the years, and I just use a Sharpie to sketch the, a similar pattern of the star tetrahedron into this box as well. This box is made of hardwood, so I did use a really sturdy carving bit for it. So for this version of the star tetrahedron, I'm interlacing all of the triangles. So it kind of turns out to be a little bit like a Celtic-y knotwork when it's turned into two dimensions. It was a really satisfying geometry to sketch out in this way. And drawing it in this way does help me focus on the three-dimensional nature of it. I love how carving leaves behind indentations. This next box I'm going to be using as a monthly manifestation box. I'll put my intentions in for the new moon and then revisit them at the next new moon. This is a pretty quick carve, so I'll show you that at the end. The next project is tile tarot card holders. So up until now, I've been using this little cardboard tarot card holder. It works perfectly well, but it's not very beautiful. <laughs> I do like that it has a nice heavy base on it though, and it holds my cards perfectly well. So if you're in a pinch, this is a totally good system for having your cards sit upright on your desk or on your altar but I have these tiles that I peeled off of a deco strip. You know the decorative tile strips that go inside of a shower stall, just at eye level? Sometimes they're in the shape of long, skinny tiles. And in this instance, they're the perfect size for a tarot card holder. These tiles I also sourced from the Zero Land Fill event. I've had these tiles for probably four years now. <laughs> I'm glad I finally came up with a use for them. 
and here I'm just using some basic old super glue to adhere it, making sure that I have enough space for my cards to go in there. I've made a couple variations of this tarot card holder just for fun because I had so many different types of tiles. I'd love to hear which one's your favorite in the comments down below. So for this variation, I had some uneven chunks of tile. I used the fat one as the base, and then I cut one tile in half to give me a piece in the front and in the back. To, to do this, I'm using my diamond Dremel cutting wheel. Of course, if you ever do this, please wear a dust mask because you do not want to breathe in all of this tile dust. So after cleaning up those pieces, I realized I wanted to change up the design a little bit. So for this front one, I trimmed it down a little bit so that it would leave more of the card on display. But the back piece would still be full size to support the card vertically. And I'm carving that front piece into the shape of almost like a gravestone. Maybe for Halloween I'll put this tarot card holder up with the death card just to be a little spooky. And then once again, I'm just using basic old super glue to adhere these to the base. I will say, since the texture on the side of these tiles is slightly different than the texture on the top and the bottom, I oiled this to give it kind of a glossy and more even finish overall. My next altar decoration is a ceramic crystal charging tile. So this one was not sourced from the Zero Landfill. This is just sourced from the thrift store. A basic old bread warmer, a piece of ceramic disc. You can really do this with anything. I just liked how flat this one was. I think it's funny that it still has the maker mark on the back. I ended up using a compass to get a more accurate circular pattern on this one. It still wasn't centered perfectly, but it was fun to see how I could work with this old compass and see how close I could get the geometry. And for this, I'm just using a basic old Sharpie pen. You could do the same thing on your wooden discs as well. I just find carving to be a little bit more satisfying since wood is easier to carve. And now I'm adding some more decorations. I wanted to hide this cir the circle hole at the top, so I ended up deciding to make a whole bunch of circles around the edge to kind of camouflage it a little bit. If I had thought more about it, I could have added a specific number of circles to add a little bit more intention to this process as well. Let's see how they all turned out. So there's a couple finishing details I added to these. I added each of the elements to the corner of this tile. And you can see I fixed up the Metatron's Cube Star Tetrahedron pattern a little bit. And I added a little bit of Sharpie to this one. And here's my Moonface spell box. I love this. I already have plans in the works for how I'm gonna use this in my spiritual practice. I love all of the tiny stars I carved in, and I love how they stand out so white against the dark colored wood. I even put stars on the smallest beveled edge on the bottom there. And here's the inked out star tetrahedron box. I used the same paint pen and a tiny, tiny, tiny brush to do all of the line work on this. It took a while, but I think it was worth it. It really helped the pattern stand out from the darker wood and the lighter wood at the same time. And you can still see the indentation. I don't quite have a plan for this yet, but I know I'll definitely use it. And here's the tarot card holders. I'd say this one's my favorite out of all of them. 
I placed the veins in a certain way so that it was balanced, so that there was white and black on both sides. So it's almost like a yin-yang type energy to it. So no matter which way I turn it, feminine and masculine energy is present. This is just such beautiful marble. Anything I would do with it would turn out gorgeous. And here's the little gravestone tile holder. If I wanted to be extra spooky, I could write rest in peace on the front of it. <laughs> I like how streamlined this one is. Here's a couple I didn't show you on camera. This one I made from a different type of tile. I also cut the piece slightly smaller in the front to show more of the card. And this pattern I really liked. The pattern of this tile kind of reminds me of the Parthenon or ancient Greece in some way. So maybe if I'm working with a Greek deck of tarot cards, I'd be able to use this tarot card holder and it would fit well. There's the collection of holders all together. Here's the crystal charging tile. I really love how this one turned out and it's actually the perfect size for this silk altar cloth I have too. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much you guys for watching and I really hope this helped to inspire you to make some new altar decorations for yourself, especially out of reclaimed or found objects. I hope to see you next time. Bye!